Next question is, what advice would you guys have for someone who is just starting out in ministry? Also, in what ways can one hear clearly what their calling is? All right, Ben, will you go first on this? Yeah, um, well, I, I do believe, I think you've said this before, Luke, that every every believer has a ministry. Uh, it, it may take different um, forms, um, and you know, you might pro provide different services, or so to speak, or you might serve in a different way, but we all we all have a ministry. Um, and so I, I don't think it's um, that... Uh, you know, I think that that's a, a clear call that we all have. And so it's not something we should wonder at. It's something that we, we do have. Uh, and so, and then I definitely, I think, believe God has given uh, believers different spiritual uh, gifts to fulfill that ministry. And it's not meant to be, um, you know, uh, uh, served out alone. We're supposed to be uh, leaning on each other and uh, ministering together to each other and Inwardly and outwardly uh, to unbelievers. So uh, inwardly to each other and then outwardly to unbelievers. So um, just who is someone who's just starting out in ministry, I, I would say the advice I, I would have, is, first of all, is uh, before you really go out and, and try to you know, take on too much, um, stud stu study to show yourself approved. And by studying, I mean, and, and, and to, by showing yourself approved, is can can you can read the Bible and uh, harmonize passages that seem like they're contradictions, but they're not? Uh, can you can you defend strongly your position against uh, heresies like lordship salvation, for example? Um, you know, can can you come up with a passage? Uh, you know, can you come up with a, a strong defense? I believe uh, against people who would try to twist scripture out of context. Um, that that I guess that's probably more for someone who's who's teaching in a teaching position, uh, but I think we all should be you know again studying to show ourselves approved. Uh, we, we you know it's not like I think a lot of people, especially nowadays, will lean too way too much on watching YouTube videos all day. Uh, I think I think it's fi perfectly fine to learn from other people, but some people that's their sole source of of learning God's word is listening to others. Um, uh, not only reading others' word, but you know, listening to their videos and etc. And I think it's extremely, extremely important to uh, read the Bible yourself. And it, you might not all, you might not understand it at all at first. In fact, I think at first it can be extremely frustrating. At least it was for me because I didn't understand. Uh, it, the Bible is written, you know, in a way that's counter to the flesh. You know, it's it's it. God's word, our spirit, and so it's counter to. A lot of things that we assume and people read it kind of in their flesh and they try to apply uh, carnal principles to it. It doesn't work. The, the Bible truly does define itself. It has its own language. Um, and, you know, if you think about it, if, if an alien culture landed on planet Earth and they spoke a different language, they would have to start with the basics about, you know, what their words meant and, and before they could develop into more higher level uh, communications. And I think that's exactly what the Bible does. And that's why it's important to read it from the beginning. And whenever a new concept is introduced for the first time in the Bible, that's is where you're usually going to find how it's defining that term or principle, like the word seed, for example. Uh, you know, yes, there, there's a physical physical seed in the Bible, but there's also, also obviously a, a spiritual seed. And we learn later that the, the spiritual seed is the word of God, for example. Um, and so, um, and so for example, I know that people in early Genesis think that there's a serpent seed and a, and a, and a, and a godly seed and that certain, certain people are, you know, basically are, are born under Satan, are Satan's her father and, and God's, uh, the other, uh, believer's father, um, and from a, from a, from a physical, uh, uh, genealogical, geological, genealogical perspective. Uh, again, I think that serpent seed doctrine is dangerous and, and false. Um, and I think that, what, again, even in Genesis, is talking about a spiritual seed. That's why Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. Not that Satan actually uh, procreated them, but no, they, they are reflecting. In fact, in the Bible, when it talks about, like, father, actually, this is a perfect example. The Bible uses often, very often, like, you are the father of or son of, things like that. Yes, obviously, there's obviously times where in the context, it tells you that this person was actually, you know, 
uh, the, the, the physical father of another person. But often, uh, when it talks about it, like in the New Testament especially, it's referring to that you, like when it says, like, uh, you, we are uh, Abraham's children, for example, or uh, Abraham's our father. It means that we are reflecting the character of the first person in the Bible that 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 is documented to have reflected that character. So Abraham was kind of like the first person that really, uh, or the chief person that exercised faith in God and and His promise. Um, and that's why it says, like for example, Jesus said to the Pharisees, "You are of your father the devil." Well, it's because that they wanted to murder a man. They wanted to murder Jesus, and, and Satan was the first murderer in the Bible. He wanted, he tried, he, he killed man, he murdered man, so to speak, with God's law by making them weak under the law and breaking that relationship they had with the Spirit. And so, and that's why it says in the Bible also, too, like another puzzling passage, like, uh, you know, something like I make, I'm paraphrasing it, I probably don't have this right, but like, uh, you know, uh, Tubal Cain uh, is the father of all who, who uh, you know, have, uh, 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 that uh, have a gift in musical arts. Again, it doesn't mean that he was a physical father. Is that he was the first person in the Bible that reflected that character to have a, a special uh, skill um, with musical arts, for example. I don't think it was Tubal Cain, but I, 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 I think you get the point. So again, the Bible defines its own terms, and um, I think it's important to really spend a lot of time understanding what the the the, the how by how the Bible defines itself, so that you could uh, decode, if so to speak, uh, passages that are are that seem to be seem to be contradictory or people twist uh, out of context. I think that's extremely important. I, I definitely made that mistake. Um, again, I, I I I was as a new believer, I was I had a lot of zeal for the Lord, and then I kind of fell into um, oh, I wanted to start evangelizing, so I I, I got great comforts. Uh, uh, programs to learn about how to uh, evangelize according to the way of the master. And then I fell into all kind of false doctrine. It didn't last long. It didn't fool me for long, but it was enough to almost kill me. Um, and so, again, I went out and made, I, I taught, a, I preached a false gospel for a while. And it, I, I have a great, I have a lot of grief over that. And so, um, again, I think it's important to, First, get yourself grounded firmly in the grace of God. And it's only when you are firmly grounded in the grace of God can you uh, not only manifest this, the gifts of the Spirit uh, and the fruit of the Spirit, but it's only then where you can help others. Otherwise, if you're if you're if you're concerned that you're going to constantly uh, fall into condemnation or lose your salvation, well, you're going to be self-centered. You're not really going to be serving others. You're gonna, it's all going to be tainted with. Uh, again, sin or, or self-preservation. You're not you're not doing it out of selflessness or pure grace. You're doing it out of law principles, and and uh, again, it, it's it's no good. Um, and so, how can we know what our calling is? For me personally, um, it, it's only when I kind of gave up on trying to figure out what my calling was or how I should serve did I think God really answer that prayer. Um, because for me, again, I I was kind of a lone wolf for a long time trying to trying to crank out the Christian life up by my own power and out of my own flesh. And I was utterly confused, doing everything on my own, uh, not having fellowship with anyone. And it's only when I kind of gave up on that completely and had, was in, in despair and just called out to God and cried out to God, show mercy, you know, uh, have mercy on me. Not that he was withholding his mercy, but he needed me to realize that I couldn't do it on my own at all in any respect, not only for salvation, but even just living the Christian life moment by moment. It's only then where all this grace was kind of like, uh, it just all happened. It fell into place naturally. Like I, I, I started fellowshipping, fellowshipping with Luke and coming into this ministry. And, uh, you know, I, I never thought for a second, or it was never my motivation even for a second to come on these panels and start, you know, uh, participating on a regular basis. I love doing it, but um, I was asked to do it and I get it. I just, I think it's something that God just opened up for me. Um, so it's not something that I, I, um, sought to do myself. I, I let, I, I think it's important to allow God to show you these things, to open the doors for you and I, it'll be effortless. You just fall right in line. So I'm sure uh, Renee and Luke have much more, uh, profound things to say about it, but, um, that's my early experience. All right. Thank you, brother Ben. Renee, you have something really profound to say? Uh, you put me on the spot. 
All right. So the question is, what advice would you guys have for someone who's just starting out in ministry? Also, in what ways can one hear clearly what their calling is? All right. Well, I would have to agree with Ben to study to show thyself approve a workman, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth so that you're not ashamed. OK, and he's right on that. Uh, in addition, first Peter tells us to have an answer for the hope we have. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So <laughs> we should have, see, God tells us to reason together with him. We don't just have blind faith like the atheists say. We have faith based on evidence. Uh, we have studied God's word. We've studied the history. We've studied the apostles and how they responded to his resurrection. We've studied all these things and we're convinced by the evidence that Jesus did rise from the dead and did everything he promised he would do. And therefore he is who he says he is and is trustworthy that we can have the promise of eternal life because he himself rose from the dead. Uh, as brother Luke says, raised again for our justification. I think it's resurrection uh, justified our faith that gave us a strong reason for it. In, a, in addition, if you go over to Ephesians chapter four, he talks about the different things, uh, uh, gifts that people have. Ben was correct in saying that we don't have to wonder because his one great commandment to every Christian is to preach the gospel to every creature. We don't have to wonder if, if we're supposed to do that. Every Christian is supposed to tell others about the good news of what Christ accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection on Calvary. That is something everyone is supposed to do. Again, I would agree with Ben saying it's good to watch videos. If you have someone you trust to watch the videos to help guide you along, but to go to the scriptures, check everything they say, including myself, check everything I say in context, in the scriptures, and go to God yourself with his word and confirm it with him. Uh, and before we should try to teach anybody, we should be. You know, we don't want to be blind leading the blind. We need to understand the scriptures and study them and let God. And if we don't know, we need to just say, I don't know. I will look into that. But we don't want to be wrong and tell somebody wrong. Uh, if we have, we need to come back and say, hey, I think something different. Matter of fact, recently I saw something different than what I had said. It's not a major doctrine, but I'm going to go back and say, Here's what I said. I think it might be true, but also look at this because I may have been wrong. So I think it's important that we do that, especially if we're in a position where people are looking up to us. Even though I'm not a pastor and I'm just a sister in Christ, I, I understand that sometimes people do look up to me and I have a responsibility to be certain of things before I say them. And if I'm not certain, to be very clear. That is just my opinion or why I might think this way. So if you go to Ephesians chapter four, not everyone is, is uh, a minister, a preacher, uh, has a ministry in that sense. Some of us are prayer warriors. Some of us uh, do charity work. We should all be doing all the good works we can, right? We should all be helping everyone that needs it. And if they're lost, uh, give them the gospel because that's the greatest thing ever. Uh, but every person should be doing all the things a Christian should do, right? But we all have specific gifts. Some people are prayer warriors. Some people actually are good at praying for the sick. Um, so let's look at Ephesians 4. The, I, therefore, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. This is every Christian, okay? With all lowliness and meekness, with long sufferings or patience, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, okay? So every person in Christ has a vocation that we've been called into. We're told to walk worthy 
of that. Now, he also says, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, when he, he saith, he ascended us on high, he led captivity captives and gave gifts unto men. So, if you go down here, it says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists. That, that's what I am. I'm an evangelist. And some pastors and teachers. I also do some of that. We all, sometimes we're not just one area. We're in several areas. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. That's when we were when we're resurrected and glorified body, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the heading in Christ. So every person has a vocation we're to walk worthy of. Uh, it's God's will that we all mature, right? He does, however, give some people gifts in, an, in every area. Every Christian has some kind of gift. And God tells us clearly, every Christian has a vocation that we're supposed to walk worthy and give Jesus a good name, not to be saved, but as ambassadors of Christ, so that the church is blameless, so that the name of God is not blasphemed, right? To be a light unto men for a good testimony, a good witness, so that others come to saving faith in Christ. So we preach the gospel to every creature. Some of us uh, have very specific ministries. But not everyone is going to be a teacher. Not everyone is called to be uh, a prophet or a healer or a prayer warrior. We're all told as Christians to do all these good works. But the main thing is to walk worthy of the Lord as an ambassador for Christ, ambassador of Christ, and to preach the gospel to every creature. If you start with that motive, Letting the Lord guide you through the Holy Spirit. Doors will open. Okay. Be willing to preach the gospel. To have an answer for the hope that you have. Study to show yourself approved. Spend time in the word of God. Grow in grace and walk worthy of your vocation. Telling you doors will open. Ben just told you he had no plan at all. And doors open for him. I don't even think he likes public speaking. But the doors were open and he went through them. So I think if you just do what the Lord puts in front of you, as, as I just said, to walk worthy, to study, to preach the gospel, that God will be faithful and open the door for you to use whatever gift he's given you. You may have a very strong pull on your heart to pray for the sick. Your ministry may open up and turn out to be a place where people just send in prayers to you and you get groups of people just to pray for the sick. There's many ways to serve the Lord. And we should all keep our eyes open for all the ways that are set before us. If God puts someone in need before us, we should do what we can to fill that need, whether it's physical or spiritual. Sometimes it may be just you giving time to that person. So. Just do what God commands us to do as Christians, and I believe the door will be open. Your gifts will be revealed. Just do what you're supposed to, and God will open the doors for you. Okay, thank you. Well said. Uh, well, I think this is a... I, I don't recall exactly the quick questions uh, necessarily that we answered, but this is probably the most important question. Uh, that's a question every believer uh, should be uh, asking themselves and trying to get to the bottom of. Um, we all are familiar with the, the parable of the, the sower. And uh, there are some that teach that uh, only the last 
feed that fill on good soil are going to save people. But um, I think all of us here agree that now uh, only the first group are unsaved. The seed that fell by the wayside and the bird snatched it away. Um, I think we've, we agree that uh, the seed in the shallow ground, the thorny soil and the good soil are saved. <clears throat> so, but the difference is that uh, some believers uh, grow and mature and produce uh, and, and, and really uh, I get busy working for the Lord and producing fruit and, and uh, um, their lives as, as Christians are successful uh, in terms of growing and maturing and being fruitful. And then uh, there are many others that their lives are really not very successful in, in any kind of ministry work, um, not producing any fruit. They're all equally regenerated. Each, each of the seeds was sprung to life. So that means that each one of these groups of people were they're they're regenerated, they're born again, they have the Holy Spirit. But once once you're born again, what what next? That's a very important question. Um, and uh, I think uh, Bible Jim told me once. He says uh, every believer should after they get saved, they need to uh, ask God, what is it you want me to do? and then get busy doing it. And I think that was very, you know, very simple, but pro profound to find out what the Lord wants you to do and then get busy doing it. Um, okay. The, one thing, the, 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 the most important thing that we'll ever do is share the gospel. I mean, there, there are some religions that, that think that what you got to do is feed the hungry and clothe the naked and, and all these, these things that are charitable good works. Um, and that's that's what your priority is. But you, if, if you feed someone, but you don't feed them the, the word of God, what have you done? You've helped them be satisfy their hunger for a day, but then they end up going to hell because you didn't give them what they really needed, the, the bread of life. So the most important thing we'll ever do in the first and calling you have uh, is uh, to uh, share the gospel. And everybody can do that from, from the day that you're born again. If you understand the gospel and you get born again, then you're, you have what it is, is needed to share the gospel. You just tell them what you've come to believe and why. Uh, maybe give your testimony, as we like to say. So no matter who you are, uh, as soon as you're born again, you are qualified. And I think that, uh, I, you know, we're called by, by um, Jesus and Paul told us to get busy working. Jesus said, uh, don't, don't build up your treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, but build up your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy. Eternal treasures. And what, how do you get them? By, by serving the Lord. Every believer instantly becomes a minister. Now, a minister, it's, it's not, I'm not talking about minister as a title like uh, a, a pastor. Uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, do not think I came to be ministered to, but rather to minister and to give my life as a ransom for many. Other translations translate the word minister as servant. Don't, do not think I came to be served, but to serve. And gave, Jesus gave us examples of that, now, by, by humility and serving, by washing the feet of the apostles. If he's willing to wash your feet to serve, then, then what an example to us that we should be humble and serve however we are able. Uh, but the first thing and uh, the thing that we're all qualified to do is, is uh, share the, 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 the gospel. Uh, and uh, probably the simplest way to do it is just share your own t testimony. Uh, so, and Paul says that and talks about uh, the the judgment seat of Christ for the believers. How our, our ministry will be judged. See, from the day you're you're born again to your last breath, uh, a record's being kept of what you did for the cause of Christ, and uh, you will be rewarded: gold, silver, precious gems, uh, and uh, some of the things we do will be burned up as wood hay, hay and stubble because uh, either it was not of any value or perhaps the motivation was wrong. You did it for the wrong reason. I, 
but um, we, we should keep busy. So you need to find out what does God want me to do and then get busy uh, doing it. Uh, now, uh, apart from the gospel, sharing the gospel, uh, there's many other, many callings. Uh, uh, Renee mentioned uh, uh, maybe some or, or, or all of them, but uh, what are you called to do? Um, I, I think the best way to find out is there's two things that could be helpful. Uh, perhaps you've been given a talent in life. Maybe you have a gift for music. Uh, well, if, if you know that you're, you've already been singing and playing instruments and doing that, then, well, then why not bring that gift? And then maybe that's the gift that God gave you to use for the church. Uh, the Bible says that the body is, has hands. Well, that may be you're the, someone that has to, is, is supposed to be the hands and get busy uh, working. And maybe you need to sweep up the floor and put away the chairs at the end of the church service. Uh, feet, maybe you're called to travel for the cause of Christ. Uh, mouths, uh, maybe you're the one that's supposed to be the, 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 the speaker or the teacher. Uh, but I, I'd say that uh, two things that you, to find out what you're called to do, well, some of us know our, our gifts. I, I knew that my gift in life was to teach, and I, that, that's my degree. I'm, I have a degree in education, and I've taught. It's before I was saved, I taught uh, various subjects. And uh, so I thought the natural thing for me to do was take the talent that I had and, and see if I can't use it. I, I, I'd already given at least 10,000 public speeches in my life before I got saved. And so if I'm a public speaker, uh, why not speak for the Lord? What greater thing to speak, to speak about? So I started street preaching. Uh, but you should tr try all the different things. Be the feet, be the hands, be the mouth. Do uh, Fill all those roles, and then maybe you'll discover which is one that you're really supposed to focus on. But I think even though uh, maybe I'm, I'm called to, to teach and speak, but uh, if there's another need and it's not my gift, I should be willing to fill in the fill the void, even though, well, I'm not really talented in that, but it needs to be done. So let's not say, hey, it's not my gift. No, let's, let's just do the best we can until the person who's really talented in that area it, it come, becomes available. Um, so I guess, let me see, the question is, uh, um, how do you know what you're called to do? I guess those, that's what would be my, my advice to find out uh, what your calling is. But the main thing is get busy doing it. And even if you make some mistakes, you will learn along the way, but at least by, by doing. Um, okay, Renee or, or Ben, any more on this? Just, you know, uh, I think it's important that when we want to serve the Lord, that we really, we really need to remember it's about him. And always keep in mind, it, you know, is this what, is it for the Lord? Just always keep our motives in check. Uh, not to condemn, because, but to keep our hearts open to service that may not be, uh, they may not be very glorious or they may be, um, uh, remember, it's not about what man sees you doing. You know, Jesus said, if you give a glass of cold water to one of my brethren, it's going to be remembered. So there's nothing small to God when you're showing love or kindness. Just remember, nothing is too small. Any act of love or kindness is remembered. One last thing I remember that um, uh, let's let's say that um, you need to. Um, get busy immediately doing something but slow down it may sound like a contradiction but no let's start doing some find and even if it's not your calling get busy doing it but i would caution everybody when it's particularly when it comes to teaching i've seen this happen so many times where people uh, are too eager to be a teacher there's something about being a teacher that maybe appeals to our egos and, and that uh, we want to teach. 
Um, but I would say that if you have not uh, studied for many years, uh, you should not be teaching. Uh, just spend your time learning. And uh, uh, at some point, maybe you'll qualify to teach. Isn't there a verse? Maybe you can remember uh, where this is someone, but uh, I think there's a verse that's a cautionary telling us that uh, if you're a teacher, be careful because uh, you, you have a greater uh, responsibility. Yeah, we'll, be more, we'll re receive a stricter judgment. Let there not be many teachers. I don't know the address of that verse particularly, but. Yeah. So I would say that uh, if you've been just got saved and the months or just in the last year or so, uh, I, I would say really, really slow down. And uh, even though you're eager to serve, find some other way to serve and don't be don't try to start teaching too soon. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it says be not many masters. Uh, so if you God will elevate you, God will elevate you. You, you, you shouldn't be too quick to you get saved. You think you got some understanding. Now you want to go be teachers of everyone else. And uh, I tell you, it was years, years of fear, years of asking God. And I stuck to certain things because I knew soteriology was the most important. So I made sure that I understood everything about that doctrine. And I made clear to people, I, look, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a theologian. I will try to answer if I can, but I have seen people get saved. And then a couple months later, they're out teaching people. And then I've seen people start a ministry of teaching and then they're, they're teaching wrong because all they're doing is listening to one or two preachers they like and just copying everything they hear instead of actually taking time in the scriptures and letting God show them. So I, I think that's really important. Let God elevate you. Don't don't lift yourself up into a position, but just serve God the way we're supposed to live the way you're supposed to. Then God will elevate you. It says that clearly because there is. A, and, and I and I fear I don't ever I tell you guys, check everything I say, because I don't want anybody uh, to be taught wrong or for me to mislead. In any way, because there is a warning, be not many masters, because it is a greater judgment on us, because everyone under us, we're responsible for those people. And so I think that's a really good point Luke made. Don't get saved and then jump right into teaching. You need to spend years and time letting the Lord show you in the scriptures what his word says. All right. Yeah, didn't okay. Paul didn't Paul spend a good uh, ten years or more uh, studying, you know, communing with God yep. before he started, He went out. Yep, fourteen years he, he went out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I hope that was helpful to everybody because that was a very important and a profound question that uh, needed to be uh, answered. Uh,